Well, if you're anything like me, you're probably getting pretty bored of playing some of these old folk songs. So I thought it'd probably be a good time to um, get you guys recording some popular music. And uh, the first song that I like to start with uh, is the Beatles song, Let It Be. For those of you who don't know the Beatles, uh, you're missing out. Definitely one of the most influential and popular uh, rock and roll bands of all time. They were popular and most of the decade of the 60s, from 1962, pretty much until they broke up in 1970. And one of the most famous songs of all time uh, is Let It Be. Uh, I'd encourage you, if you don't really know too much of the music of the Beatles, spend, spend an hour uh, listening to them and getting familiar with them, because any great musician um, knows the Beatles. So we're going to uh, record the beginning part of uh, the Beatles song, Let It Be, to give you some practice plan and actual pop rock song. So let's jump right in to Band Lab now. And we're gonna start with the piano part. It's actually a pretty iconic piano part. Now what we're gonna be recording here is not gonna be the exact same piano part that was used um, in the original. That gets a little bit more complex than for those of you that are just starting out playing piano. I don't wanna overwhelm you with too much um, craziness in terms of what you need to learn in, in your piano skills right now. Um, might be something you might want to learn later because it's not overwhelmingly difficult. It's just um, probably beyond the scope of a, a beginning piano part. So we're just going to kind of break it down into more of a simple chord uh, arrangement that will make it easier for you guys to play the first time. Okay, um, so we're going to first change our BPM to 66 beats per minute. It's in 4-4. Um, so we don't need to change our time signature. Now we're going to be playing four chords in this song, um, and they are the C chord, which you know, you play it with C, the notes C, E, and G. C, E, and G. And I just want to make sure that my sound is coming through here. There we go. This should be better for you. Sorry about that. Um, so, all right. So we're going to start with the C chord, which again is C, E, and G, C, E, and G. Uh, we play these notes with the Z, C, and B. All right. Uh, the next chord we play in this song is G, the G chord, and that is using the B, M, and period keys. All right. The notes actually in that chord are G, B, and D. All right. The next chord we play here is A minor. Now we did play A, the chord A before, or without even saying it, we, we, you should know that A major and A are the same when we, when we talk about, you know, kind of lead sheet notation or pop music. Um, but A minor is a different sounding chord, okay? A major. It uses that C chord. Well, in, uh, in A minor, that C sharp becomes C natural. It makes it sound a little sadder, I guess. Um, right, so this is a little tricky, at least playing it on a QWERTY keyboard, because you got to use N, comma, and the Q, which again is an upper diagonal. Kind of like when you played A before, you had to do the same thing. So um, some of you may make the Q Maybe the um, slash question mark key will work, but for most of you, it won't. So the N, comma, and Q, you kind of have to bring your left hand probably across to play that N, or sorry, play, play the Q to make that A minor chord happen. And then we play F, which we played before, F, A, and C, uh, V, N, and comma, F, A, and C. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now looking at your sheet music, you should be able to follow along here. I'm just gonna play the intro, verse one and verse two.
right, so you should have 12 full measures there. Now I did make a couple mistakes. You'll be able to see them probably just by kind of looking at the MIDI data here. Let's see if they came up. Yeah, there's just this extra note right there. So I'm gonna just click on that and delete that. You see, I think that happened again. Oh yeah, right here. So let's kind of look through that. And then there was one other time when I played an E minor chord instead of the F chord. This is a very simple fix, just take the notes and move them up. Make sure they line up in about the same spot there. Yeah, there they go. All right, so there's my right hand piano part. If I wanted, I could then uh, kind of record a, a bass part um, and you know, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to add one more track to my piano part and then just play the left, what would normally be the left hand part. This is going to be very similar to a, uh, a bass part. All right, so I'm going to add a new track and it defaults to the piano, piano LH or left hand, and then the piano right hand there. So now, Bring in my instrument, and this is too, could be too high now because we want this to be low. That's a good range right there. So again, I'm down. I'm I'm at the second octave right here, and I'm starting on the con. All right, let's give this a go. good thing that I got a chance to hear that because I noticed that my piano part right there I had a flat instead of a natural so I'll fix that now all right so now I've got a nice full you know it, obviously this is going to sound Going to sound more full than just playing the right hand by itself. All right, so now what we're going to do as a lot of pop songs do, they kind of layer their instruments and in. they don't all start playing from the outset. I mean, some do certainly, but um, we're going to kind of uh, build this arrangement into um, the chorus. The chorus is going to kind of be our, our bigger part in this particular song as it is in most songs. So we're going to start with just the piano introduction and then we're going to bring in the bass um, starting at the first verse. So the first four measures here are the introduction or the intro. Verse one starts at, at measure five and verse two starts at measure nine. I'm gonna bring my bass in at five and have it play until the end. So I'm bringing a new track and it's gonna be bass. 1962 of course is a good representation of Beatles sound, even though it wasn't exactly the same bass that Paul McCartney used. That's okay. All right, so let's record the bass part.
right, now I'm just gonna, I don't want the base in at the beginning, so I'm gonna drag in to there. Oops, didn't catch there. All right, and you'll notice that I played eighth notes, dun, 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 like that. The piano part is kind of playing those straight quarters, dun, bum, bum, bum. So I wanted to do something a little different there. All right. And now we've got our bass in there. And now one thing we're going to we're going to add one more track to this for the accompaniment part and that is going to be a guitar. And I'd like an electric guitar. Let's check out this jazz guitar. This will work. I'm going to bring this up. And just like we played arpeggios before, which were those broken chords, we're going to do that again here. It's actually pretty common for a guitar part to be playing arpeggios. If you need a refresher on arpeggios, go back and hear the earlier lesson on arpeggiation. Um, but we're going to assume that you know that by this point. And we're going to bring in that guitar at the second verse, which starts at measure nine. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I could even start my playhead one measure earlier. Label these guys. All right. Instead of like playing through the whole thing and uh, and listening to everything and then having the guitar come in at nine, I'm gonna just start from from measure nine. All right. So select my guitar track. Get ready. Let's see. So let's give this a go now. All right, so now we've got a guitar arpeggiated part there. Bring up the volume of that. It's simplistic, but of course it'll work here. All right. And the last thing that I want you to do is have your lead instrument. Okay, that could be you singing or it could be you playing something, um, playing the actual melody. Now, if you look at the sheet music that's attached to this assignment, you'll see that I have simplified the melody to this song. There's a lot, it's a lot more difficult when you actually, if I were to notate it exactly like um, Paul McCartney sang this in the original, then it would sound very complex or look very complex. So I simplified this, um, but feel free, if you know the rhythm of this song and you know how it should be played, then go ahead and play it or sing it that way. But I just, I wrote a, a more simpl simplistic version. Um, so it might make it a little easier for you to, um, to start. Okay, so we're gonna add a new track, which is gonna be our melody. And this is gonna start at measure five. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my playhead at four. Let's identify what instrument we want. Let's see here. Well, there's a voice patch on here. So lush vocals, let's see what this sounds like. Let's active up. up the octave. Right, a little 
little cheesy, but that'll work. Okay, so I'm just put voice here. And let's start recording. Starts on the note G, which is played on the note B. Oops. Gotta be careful you're in the right menu. This kind of thing. So we got a vocal line in there. It wasn't exactly how I notated it, but it's pretty close. All right. So now we can layer all these together. We've got five tracks. We've got uh, two piano tracks here, one for the right hand, one for the left hand. We've got our bass part that comes in at bar five. We've got our guitar part that comes in on the second verse at bar nine. And then we've got our voice that comes in on verse one uh, at measure, pick up to measure five. All right. Again, if you want to record your vocal or someone singing the vocal, that's actually preferable to playing the voice part um, on the keyboard here. All right. So that's all you need to do for the first week is get those five tracks down. We call this the tracking phase where you just kind of get the material in there. Next week, we're going to continue working with the same project and we're going to add drums on the chorus. And we're also going to add... Um, we're gonna add obviously the rest of the instruments in the chorus. And I'm gonna show you about EQ or equalization. It's one of the effects that we have at our disposal to make our projects more interesting. All right, so get working on just doing the tracking for the intro, verse one and verse two.